everybody, welcome to Norfolk High School's annual Hispanic celebration, Hispanic Heritage Month celebration. You guys have all been chosen out of a couple of classes um, that are elite classes that would enjoy the celebration. That's why we chose you. You're a special group of elite students. So thank you for coming. And now um, I have the pleasure to turn it over to our principal, Ms. Pick, who will welcome everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. This, this has certainly grown from last year. If I remember last year, we were a much smaller group. So uh, this is really nice. This is beautiful to see everyone here and enjoying themselves. Couple of things. A lot of things, right? We, ha we have to remember our gratitude. It's not because I did yoga this morning. It's because I'm grateful every day. And I want to remember to be grateful. So um, I don't think any of this would really be possible without Mr. Munoz, who's really always, and he's got another day ahead on tomorrow with our Hispanic Ball Fest, but he always manages to bring the community together, whether it's the school community, the community at large, if it's the school community outside of Hoboken High School. So I think he deserves a great round of applause. Of course, the, it always takes a village, right? Um, so many thanks to Ms. Stella Rosa and Ms. Cruz. <laughs> Mr. Stasiak and DJ Ray for the musical entertainment. <laughs> Mr. McCauley and his assistant, Mr. Quinones. Uh, and really, Chef Nelson and her students for putting on. So, I also want to thank everyone here because I, I feel part of what these celebrations are about are about uh, bringing people together bringing people together that necessarily don't always understand a lot of what the celebration is about. Um, I feel humbled because I get to experience so many different cultures as the principal of Hoboken High School, and I also feel that I'm always so welcomed um, in every different type of celebration, and every year I learn something new. So I, I thank everyone for their kindness and their welcome, welcoming attitude. I want to thank um, Councilman Ruben Ramos for being here with us today. And of course, our Assistant Superintendent, Mrs. Rodriguez Gomez. So before we get started, let's welcome Ms. Sandra Rodriguez Gomez. So I'm really happy that I get to talk really, really quickly and then you eat instead of the other way around because then you'd be busy with that food that looks extremely delicious and I don't want to stop that from happening. So very quickly, I want to say that I'm so honored to be joining all of you for your Hispanic Heritage Celebration. I've, all, I've been in the district for five years and I've always wanted to be a part of, of this day, and so I thank Principal Pietra and certainly Mr. Munoz for sending the invitation my way. So, many of you know, and if you don't, the more I talk, the more that will be, become clear. Uh, I am Latina. I am Puerto Rican. I am your assistant superintendent, and I am you. So it wasn't that long ago that I was a student in high school, that's like maybe 20, 20 years ago. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, I'm just trying to figure out what university I would be applying to and really what I wanted to be when I grew up. Well, my answers were clear very early. I always wanted to be a teacher. Not just any teacher, right? But the best teacher to have ever walked the planet. That's the kind of ambition that was always a part of my being. I grew up in Newark, 
which is a uh, community that is not that much different from yours, there were some constants in my life, and these have remained with me till today. I was raised by a father who taught me very early on how beautiful it was and is to be Puerto Rican. How we are a combination of European, African, and indigenous Taino blood. Right. How we are a fusion of all of these groups and how it is impossible to not like any one group because we are all of them. So to me, being Latina is a very powerful thing. It is casa. It is reggaeton. It is the melody of the coqui. And it is that sing-song Spanish that is very much characteristic of the island. It is strong and it is brilliant. It is all of the things that you are, so much more. And you will become all of these things and so much more. My journey in this field of education has been long and often tough, but I'm tougher. Do you give up the first time you don't accomplish something or do you look at it as a challenge to revisit, redo, accomplish, get better? If you lose, it's just another opportunity to win. If you don't do well on a task, it's just another opportunity to do better. Lastly, and to me, most importantly, I stand before you as the first Latina assistant superintendent ever appointed in Hoboken Public School. The amount of pride that fills me with is immeasurable. Believe me that when I walk into a room, the Puerto Rican flag flies invisibly behind me. It gives me strength. And it reminds me that from that tiny island in the Caribbean, much greatness has risen. What will you do with your rich heritage? What first will you accomplish? Know your history and reach for the future, but remember that it won't be easy because nothing that's worth having is ever easy. And so I want to thank you for your attention, and I want you to be inspired to dig deep for your own greatness and I appreciate the opportunity to come speak with you today. Good luck. I just want to share two things about uh, our assistant superintendent. Um, one of the coolest things that I've seen in a long time, being a Hispanic Culture Club advisor fills me with so much pride and joy you don't know. Those are my kids. Do me a favor, Hispanic Culture Club, please stand up for one second. With your shirt, stand up proud. There you go. Give them a round of applause because these are your representatives in the building for the Hispanic culture. Thank you. Well, these shirts that we're wearing, I gotta tell you, are so amazing. Everyone knows my wife, Bernie, works at Central Office. Everyone knows her. Yeah. Um, when our assistant superintendent, who was the former principal of Ranch School, signed her contract, to be the assistant superintendent of the whole of public school, she was wearing this t-shirt. So I thought that was so cool we posted that, so that's one story I want to share. Plus, she has actually been recognized by the whole Puerto Rican Cultural Committee as our Latino Educator of the Year. So let's give her a round of applause for that. Okay, so now, before we go any further, our favorite part of the show, I know everyone's our favorite part of the presentation, is the food. So we will do this in an orderly fashion, okay? We're going to pull these first two tables up right here, and you're going to need two lines on each side. And then when they're done, Ms. Ella Rosa will direct the other two, and then move forward, okay? So give us a couple of moments. Okay? All right, so... DJ Ray, take it away while we eat for no. some great reviews. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're enjoying the food that Chef Nelson and the culinary arts classes prepared for you. Let's give Chef Nelson and then a round of applause for feeding us. Thank you so much. And now we're going to turn over a portion to the man, the myth, the legend, all right? A former Hoboken High School Teacher of the Year, Mr. David Stasio. Right. Hey everyone. Okay, so uh, this wouldn't be a celebration if we didn't celebrate some of the great art that uh, Hispanic uh, culture has created. 
So uh, we're going to start off with a couple of songs by the band that were performed uh, at the Dominican Day Parade. Um, and then we're going to call up the chorus and do a combined number. So the first two um, are uh, Dominican pop songs from the 70s and 80s. The first one is uh, Baile en las Calles. And the second one is Compadre Pedro Juan. One little fun Mr. Stasiak fact, he is married to a Dominican, so he is officially one of us.
Let's hear it one more time for Mr. Stasiak and the Rockin' Red Wings in the chorus. And now, it is my pleasure to bring up my friend and a huge friend of the Hispanic community in Hoboken, Hoboken City Councilman Ruben Ramos. Thank you, Mr. Ramos. Right, let's put this back a bit for a second. I won't take much of your time, uh, ladies and gentlemen. As Ms. Munoz said, my name is Ruben Ramos. Uh, born and raised in Hoboken. Currently serve as your Hoboken City Council President. It's an honor to serve you guys. But it's pretty funny, you guys are walking into the cafeteria. While I don't know many of you, I know a lot of your parents. You guys are definitely mini-me versions of who your parents are. And I was like, wow, that's that one's mom, that's that one's dad. Wow. So it's uh, made a lot of sense and brought a lot of good memories back from when I used to like, play in the playgrounds here in Hoboken, Columbus Park. I didn't get to go to Hoboken High. I'm the only one of my family didn't go to Hoboken High, actually. So that, and that's because I was good enough to be on the baseball team here. So I wanted to have to play baseball over there. I didn't want to sit on that bench. But we lost Hoboken High in the county finals like two years in a row. So, uh, but I have to live with that. But ultimately, growing up, in Hoboken, it's a lot different today than it was when I was younger. A uh, lot larger Hispanic population in Hoboken when I was younger. A lot has changed over the years, and I understand uh, my role in representing the Hispanic community throughout Hoboken and Hudson County every single day, because it's the only Hispanic elected official on the city council in Hoboken. When I first got to city council, there were three and four of us. So, as a direct reflection of Hoboken Hispanic population diminishing somewhat, and me providing the representation every single day, that of day in and day out, every debate, every discussion, I have you guys in mind, your parents in mind, your grandparents are still Hoboken in mind, making sure that the Hispanic population of Hoboken still continues to thrive and survive in Hoboken as we go forward into our next, into our next decades. All right, two issues that I want to bring up. That are pertinent because I'm probably you guys are probably the only generation where I can't say I know what it's like to be you guys. I know what it's like to grow up what you guys are growing up with. But I can't say that. If you guys are exposed to a lot more things than I wasn't as a 15, 16 year old, 17 year old in high school with social media out there, with all these other things, electronics that are out there, when something happened. If my group of 10, 15 friends didn't know about it, maybe we knew about it like a week down the road. If something happens today, it's on Twitter, it's on Facebook, it's on Instagram, it's all these things that you guys have to deal with, that I didn't have to deal with. So this is the first time we're probably all going through things together, right? So we have to learn from each other. And lean on each other's experiences from that. This experience is a blank slate for me, it's a blank slate for you guys. So that's something we're going through together. We have to be cognizant of that, because what you're putting out there on social media, stays with you forever. So the things that I did as a 15 year old, they didn't stay with me forever. But the things you say and do as a 15 year old, they can catch up to you. And what we're seeing that today, or yesterday, in the holes of our capital that was taking place, what someone did in high school, good, bad, or indifferent, it's coming back to play a role in his future. It come back to play roles in all of our futures. So let's not forget how we behave, how we interact with one, with one another, with respect, courtesy, and kindness. And that's, that can take us a very, very long way. And two things about being Hispanic or African American or being a minority in the United States, that even though we always say being diversity is our greatest strength, but no matter being a minority, there's always a reality check for all of us, for all of us being a minority. And I'll give you two reality checks that I've had in my life. Two reality checks. One was in 1999 when I was diagnosed with cancer. And I went to go visit, but well, I visit, but the doctor told me I wasn't feeling well for a number of months. And they ran a battery of tests on me, he comes back and tells me that you have stage 2B Hodgkin's lymphoma. And obviously you hear the word you have cancer, not words that anyone wants to see. But that was, you know, I had cancer, we're gonna do it, we're gonna get through it. But the following words is what stuck with me was I would like to treat you, but you don't have health insurance. Now here I am, 25 years old, I wasn't dressed in a suit, had a hat on backwards, was not looking well, but because automatically, just looking at the way I was dressed and being Hispanic, he assumed 
I didn't have health insurance, that he couldn't treat me, that I wasn't working, that I didn't have a job, all these things. Automatic assumption based on what I was doing there at the time, what I, my physical appearance. When Dr. King says we want to judge people based on the content of their character, not their skin, that was a direct content of my skin and not my character. Second instance was about three years ago. Everyone here to Hamptons here? Yeah. You go to the Hamptons beaches, right? You go to the Hamptons beaches, all these mansions there. So I have a friend that's lucky enough to have a house in the Hamptons. I go there, visit my family. But with my family, go visit, he invites us out there. We go for the weekend. We go to the beach in the Hamptons, right? Wonderful experiences, all the beautiful view, beautiful setting, beautiful beach, beautiful mansion in the background. We're having a great time. We're packing up. We're packing up our stuff to leave, right? We're the, we're the only Latin family on the whole beach. So we're packing up our stuff. And it's, the, it's the wagon, and it's the blanket in there. It has the beach chairs in there. My wife and my family all leave me, and I'm grabbing all the stuff, dragging and dragging and dragging. And a lady comes up to me and says, excuse me, sir. I'll give you $20 you set my stuff up for me. Set my umbrella up. Set my, my, I said, wait, I don't work at the beach. I mean, like, beach like you. So again, she didn't judge me that I was here at the beach having a good time when joining the Hamptons. She could enjoy the Hamptons. She judged me, Hispanic guy, drawing, dragging a stroller, dragging a cart on the beach. You know, he must be working at the beach. Can't be here visiting the beach. So the two moments that no matter what we go through in our lives, no matter how far we get, educationally, professionally, socially, emotionally, that the content of our skin, some people will judge us by that. And our presence is a prime example of what he says day in and day out. And it's becoming more prevalent. But it's how we overcome those distances. Did I yell at my doctor and tell him, hey, go F yourself? No. I didn't do say that to him. I said, sir, I had two in health insurance policies. I work two jobs. This is what I do for them. This is who I am. And he's you're going to treat me. I'm going to be your patient. Did I yell at the lady in the beach? No. I said, hey, I worked my butt off. I'm enjoying this just like you're enjoying this. My family's here with you are. There's the car I drive. Here we are. You're not kicking me off your beach. So don't let anyone, don't let anyone take anything away from you. No one can take away the content of your character, the work you put into yourself, your family, your dedication to your community every single day. Every single day. You take care of you. You write your own story. No one dictate those things to you. You bring off, you give them your best foot forward every single day, no matter what. I know when I walk into a council meeting, and if I don't perform that night, people will bring it up, how I perform. If I don't speak properly at the dais, they will say, oh, you can't speak properly at the dais. When I was a, a state legislator, I was 32 years old in the state house. If I couldn't perform to my abilities, they would just laugh at me. Here's another kid who's an Hispanic who doesn't belong here. He's only here because he's Hispanic. He doesn't belong to me. He's not educated enough. He doesn't know the issues enough in the state of New Jersey. So every single day, you have to prove it to yourself and prove to others what you're worth. What you're worth. More important to yourself than to them. So what I do every single day, I think I share this many times, I was, I'll leave you with this, is that I have a, my, my mirror test every day. When I wake up in the morning, I look in the mirror, and hopefully I'm going to tell myself, be the best you you can be today. Be the best you can be today. I'm an educator, so I want to have an impact on my students. I want to have a positive impact on my wife, my kids, my family, my community. Be the best be you I can be today. And at the end of the day, I'm not brushing my teeth or washing or coming out of the shower, I look myself in the mirror today, and I make an honest assessment. Was I the best me that I could be today? And a lot of times that answer is no, because I got into an argument with someone. I didn't handle that situation properly. Uh, I didn't handle the conversation with my daughter properly. I could, I could have cleaned up the dinner table with my wife a little bit. Uh, a student had an issue, and I had to deal with it in a, in a timely fashion or a good fashion. Uh, my lesson plan wasn't the best lesson I had that day. I didn't prepare enough for a council meeting that night. There are a lot of things, but you have to have that honest, honest assessment with yourself so I can have a better day the next day. The best teacher in life that you can have is you. Is you. So I want to leave you with that, guys. So have a good day, the rest of the day. Enjoy your weekend. Let's go, Lady Red Wings tonight, Brianna. All right? let's, go, let's, go, let's, go, let's go, let's go, let's go, Red Wings on the football field tonight. Let's get that W. Well, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you.
Thank you, uh, Councilman Ramos. And to end our program, I'd like to call the president of the Hispanic Culture Club, Javinus McLean, up to the stage, please. Everyone, Javinus McLean, president of the Hispanic Culture Club. We are excited to share with you the importance of Hispanic heritage and diversity in our school community. The Hispanic Culture Club plays a big role in our school. We are one big happy family. I believe that our club is important because it helps us gain knowledge about the impact that Hispanics have made in our community. We also enjoy fun activities that help us bring us all together to help bring us all together. As a club, we give back to our community by partaking in cultural activities with our younger students. As role models, we go to different schools in our community to work with the children, and we truly enjoy it. I personally believe that learning about culture should begin at a younger age. We enjoy helping others and sharing our knowledge with them. The best part about this club is that no matter what race or ethnicity you are, you are welcome into our home, Hispanic Culture Club at Hoboken High School, with open arms. I would like to thank Hoboken High School for offering such diverse and cultural opportunities to us. It gives each and every one of us endless opportunities to embrace not only our culture as Hispanics, but the opportunity to learn about other cultures as well. Thank you, Mr. Munoz, our club advisor and administration, for guiding us through the club to cherish these learning opportunities and to share with you all. Thank you, Javinus, and everyone, thank you for coming to our celebration. I just want to thank a couple of people before everyone leaves. You know, we couldn't do anything in this building if we weren't supported, and Miss Pick and Miss Dello are our biggest fans and advocates, so thank you very much for allowing us to do these things. Central Office, Dr. Johnson, and of course, Assistant Se Superintendent Sandra Rodriguez Gomez, that is a mouthful. <laughs> and uh, I want to thank Miss Dello Rosa, Miss Cruz, Miss Cobalars. They were our enforcers today. Thank you to the language arts teachers. Thank you, Mr. McCauley, for the entertainment, and of course, Chef Nelson for the wonderful food, and Mr. McCauley for and Mr. McCauley for a recording. Thank you very much, and we will see you guys next year. Yay.